As you may already know, catalytic converter theft is happening a lot and it is because of the precious metals inside that can be more valuable than gold per ounce. It only takes minutes for a thief to slide under your vehicle and cut out the catalytic converter with a battery powered reciprocating saw. As recommended by police, painting and etching your catalytic converter, also known as a cat, can make it a less attractive target. This is because when painted and etched with your license plate number or VIN number, it is supposed to make it known to scrapyards, junkyards, auto shops, and recyclers that it was stolen. The idea is that they will less likely buy the part if it is stolen. Plus, it can be used to trace back to you and the thieves charged if caught in possession of stolen property. I'm going to show you how you can find your catalytic converter and paint and engrave it at home. After watching this, if it is more than you're willing or capable of doing, then check out our other video on several ways to protect your cat. If you had your cat stolen, you can also watch our other video on what to expect and do. I'll link to these videos in the video description below. Fracking Creations, showing you the good stuff on car security. Before we get started, I have to say that no matter what you do, if thieves want your stuff badly enough, they will find a way to steal them. So all you can really do practically is either slow them down enough to maybe get caught or get them to move on to the next target. If at any time you park anywhere not secured or monitored, drive your vehicle to the mall or grocery stores or anywhere else public, then you are vulnerable to catalytic converter theft. Using multiple layers of security is often better than using less. Painting and engraving your catalytic converter may not prevent theft 100% of the time, but it should complement other security measures you take to protect your cat. What you will need. You can get most of what you need from a local hardware or auto parts store, and in some cases, online. Bright colored, high temperature engine or exhaust header paint. You need to use high temperature paint because the exhaust components get very hot and normal paint will not withstand this. Here, I am using high temperature engine enamel paint with ceramic. Scouring pad or sandpaper to prep the surface to help the paint adhere better. Painter's blanket and or foam mat for you to lay on. Carbon filter mask. When sanding and painting, the dust, paint particles and fumes are not something you want to breathe in. A proper carbon mask will filter those particles and fumes out. Use it as per instructions manual. Safety glasses are required to protect you from the spray paint and any dirt and liquids that may drop or leak down on you as you are under the vehicle. Also, when engraving the cat, metal and dry paint particles can fly into your eyes. Gloves, clean paper towel, and some rubbing alcohol. Dremel rotary tool with an engraving bit to do the engraving. Safety. Once you have your safety gear on, you can get started. If you need to jack your car up, you must do so safely and use jack stands and wheel chocks too. Alternatively, you can also use proper ramps that raise the vehicle. Also make sure that the vehicle is in park and the parking brakes applied. If you have driven the car at all before you do this, the cat and the exhaust pipes can still be hot. Let the vehicle cool down and check carefully before you start. Locating the cat. A catalytic converter will look different in different vehicles and some will have more than one. Some can be in the engine bay and not easily accessible, but the ones that are stolen are usually just hanging underneath. One way to tell is that some cats have oxygen sensors around it. This will look like wires coming out of the exhaust pipe before and after the cat, as shown here. Though not all do, most cats are located between the engine and the resonator or muffler. Lastly, sometimes catalytic converters also have a heat shield around them. This is a piece of thin metal shell that covers it. If you aren't able to recognize yours, you can search online for pictures of catalytic converters for your year, make, and model of vehicle. Prep and paint. The prep is optional if you want to keep things simple and fast. Otherwise, before you paint, you will need to clean the surface of the cat to help the paint adhere better. Watch out for sharp edges when under the vehicle as you do the following work. Use a scouring pad or sandpaper to sand or scuff it so the surface is free of debris, rust, and dirt. For us, this cat is new so less work is required here. Next, take a clean paper towel, put some rubbing alcohol on, and clean the surface. Follow the instructions of the spray paint for applications. We apply three coats as per instructions. Afterwards, let the paint dry and cure. We were sure on time and it was cold out so we didn't let it fully cure before etching. We waited one hour which allowed the paint to dry enough before etching. 
Engraving or Etching We used the Dremel with an engraving bit on it to engrave our license plate number on both sides of the cat. Also including the province or state you live in is a good idea. Take your time, use both hands to steady yourself and make sure the engraving is deep enough. It should be much deeper than a small scratch on the surface, but not too deep to go all the way through the surface. That's all there is to doing this. Let the paint sit overnight to fully cure before you drive the vehicle again. Additional measures. I'm also in the process of experimenting with using exhaust clamps and steel cables to protect the cat better. If I get enough interest, I'll look into doing another video for it. For now, this is what we have. The exhaust clamps and a steel cable are used to better protect the front portion of the cat. This is where one of the original cuts was made when it was stolen. This makes it more time consuming to cut this section of the pipe. A couple of notes on this. The thieves need to cut or unbolt both sides to be able to take the cat. In this case, they would have to cut further up front of the cat to get around these clamps. The idea is that it may be harder to do since there's less room to get the reciprocating saw up in that space. If I had more time, I would run multiple steel cables the entire length of the exhaust pipe and multiple exhaust clamps to secure integral parts along the pipe. I would also use high temp bonding paste to bond the cables to the exhaust pipe and to bond the nuts to the exhaust clamps so that it will be harder to remove the cables or unbolt the clamps. I didn't do any of this yet because we were getting a local muffler shop to weld some half inch steel bars around and on the cat to protect it better, as can be seen here. Subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed it and please share it to help your friends and family too. Thanks for the support.